Getting a little sporty on the Mike Schickman Show today. Very pleased to have a longtime sports writer with the Daily Progress in Charlottesville, Jerry Radcliffe. How are you, Jerry? Doing great, Mike. Uh, no longer with the Progress, though. I have my own gig now. It's jerryradcliffe.com covering Virginia. Well, it's so you know, since know. you covered UVA for so long, you probably know where all the skeletons are and who buried them. Uh, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and if you don't, our other guest from the Augusta Free Press, Chris Graham. You know where those bodies are buried, don't you? Uh, yeah, the, the few that Jerry wouldn't know somehow for some reason. I definitely I've got the identity of those. I, I I figured that if not, I'll call my good friend Rich Murray, and he won't tell me anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Are you still flying that high as so many UVA fans are? After what was the greatest basketball season in uh, UVA history? Yeah, I'll, I'll start. Yeah, I mean, it, it, in some ways, basketball season has ended for a lot of UVA fans, and certainly the writers too. Uh, you know, we're looking ahead to next year already with with all the departures for the NBA and the NBA draft, and, and you know, certainly three players who look like they're going to be drafted. Uh, two guys maybe in the first round, Ty Jerome and DeAndre Hunter. But yeah, the fan base is, is still uh, walking. Uh, uh, you know, one team clouds right now. As far as, and it's been a couple of months, but it still feels that way for a lot of folks. Yeah, well, you know, I think Chris hit on it. Uh, you know, everywhere I go, people say, you know, they're still talking about. They still feel like they are in a dream, and they are just starting to wake up. They have to pinch themselves and, and say, hey, you know, I guess it was real. And uh, you know, everywhere you go, uh, anybody you talk to out of state, they, you know, they say that it was just one of the most exciting things they've ever seen. I was interviewing Curtis Strange about the U.S. Open, uh, this week's U.S. Open, uh, the other day, and, and he brought it up. He said, how about them Cavaliers? He said, that was probably the – he said, I don't know that I've ever been that excited in my life. So it's uh, it's everywhere, and I don't think it's going to die anytime soon, Mike. Well, you know, it's funny, Jerry. You and I go back a long way. Uh, first Ralph Sampson year with Lamp and Raker, there was a lot of excitement. Of course, even more excitement after Ralph graduated, Ralph Sampson and uh, Othell Wilson helped lead the Cavaliers to the Final Four. But uh, since then, there's been a lot of promise, but a lot of falling short. And then, of course, last year's debacle, losing in the first round, the one to lose to a 16. You know, all of a sudden you start hearing things about Tony Bennett. He couldn't do this, couldn't do this. Couldn't. I guess that's all gone now, isn't it? I think he's erased all the doubts. Uh, you know, I was talking to him last, I guess it was last summer, and he said, you know, people seem to use all sorts of things that gets me, uh, you know, particularly after they lowered the shot clock. And he said uh, uh, other coaches, have, you know, not all other coaches, but the ones who recruit negatively would say, why would you go to Virginia? You, you can't uh, you can't score there. You, you know, you can't uh, – you can't uh, go to the NBA there. He says, well, we've got several guys in the, in the NBA. Tony can't. Uh, Tony won't be there your whole four years. He's going to leave. And he said, well, I, I don't know what i got to do. I've been here 10 years already. And uh, then they said, you know, you can't uh, win in March. So uh, they've destroyed all those myths and negativities. And uh, uh, the guy just keeps churning out and developing talent year after year. Malcolm Brogdon was one of my favorite players because of the way he played, and he's had a nice NBA career going on. Uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, he's a, I, I guess he's a free agent now. and uh, it, It'll be interesting to see what happens with him in the coming months, but uh, uh, he's had an incredible career already for a guy who wasn't recruited that heavily. I think uh, his other option was Harvard. Let me ask you a question, Chris, because, you know, we, we're not supposed to, but we all end up having favorite teams of whatever team we're covering. Is this your favorite UVA team because they won, or did you? There was, was there one that touched your heart even more so? Just because they won, but a close, close second is the 2015-2016 team that came just short of the Final Four, the, the Malcolm Brogdon mm-hmm. senior group, he, uh, he and Anthony Gill and and uh, Ronald Parantis was a junior on that team, and Mike Toby was a senior on that team. That was such a good team, and I really think that team is the reason this team even exists. Malcolm Brogdon particularly, uh, I know Jerry was talking about him a little earlier, and he had, he had his final two college choices were easy and Harvard, and you don't see a lot of guys uh, you know, achieve what he achieved at the college level, not NBA level, uh, you know, who have those as their final two college choices, but... You know, that team uh, was on the cusp of the Final Four. They had a 15-point lead with nine minutes to go in the Elite Eight against Syracuse, and, and Syracuse you know, stormed back, won the game. And, well, I, I, I never felt worse after 
you know, for a team that I had covered so closely after a loss in that one. That was it. That, you know, a lot of those guys were seniors. That was the, the end of their run. Uh, they deserved it better. But you know, they, a lot of those guys were there uh, in Minneapolis for the, the championship game and were on the court afterwards. And, and they felt like proud poppers. You know, you could see the look on their face. You could hear, the, hear it in their voice that, uh, that they felt the kinship with this team. And this team, boy, they had to overcome so much. Uh, you know, down really every game of this tournament, uh, uh, except the Oklahoma game, you know, you're down the Gardner Webb. A year after losing to a 16, you're down by 14 points to another 16 in the first half. Uh, in your first game, and then you have to rally and beat Oregon and, and really rally in the, in the Purdue game and, and both games in Minneapolis. And so, you know, this team really you know, had to face so much um, that, uh, and, and then they overcame that. But, yeah, that 2015-2016 team was pretty special, too. What about you, Jerry? I would have to say one of the favorites. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, going back, as you mentioned earlier, Mike, uh, some of the teams with Ralph and, and uh, those guys, uh, that was special. It was kind of like covering the Beatles. I mean, everywhere you went, there were a, gil- a gazillion people wanting to, to, a piece of the Cavaliers. And uh, those were special teams that I don't think, I, I don't know that I'll ever run into a phenomena quite like that if I keep doing this 100 years. But uh, And then I think, uh, you know, the, the, the 95 team with Corey and Junior and mm-hmm. – and and uh, Harold and some of those guys were uh, incredibly fun to be around. Uh, but this this year's team and uh, the one with Joe Harris and and uh, some of those guys uh, they they are all very special. Let me and, ask you uh, one other question: yeah. Whither are the sure. Cavaliers this upcoming season? What do you think? I still think they're going to be a top twenty team, uh, Mike. Uh, they they lost the bulk of their scoring, obviously, but. Um, that's the one thing Tony's going to have to address in the off season is try to find guys who can put the ball in the hole, and they've got a lot of interesting pieces. And it, it'll be interesting to see how he meshes uh, the old and the new, and, and what he can come up with. Uh, they might might be even more conservative, believe it or not, than they were the last couple of years because they may have to be, uh, and they may have to rely more on defense than in the past uh, couple of years, but. I still think there's enough talent there, particularly some new, really good recruits coming in, that uh, I think they're still going to be a top-20 team. What do you say, uh, Mr. Graham? Yeah, it'll be, a, it'll be a very different team in the sense that it'll be more, more uh, post-oriented. Uh, you know, if, if Jay Huff steps up like a, a, a folks think he might, uh, the return of Mommy Diakite is so important. You know, Diakite had a great run in the NCAA tournament, and if he plays like that consistently next season, uh, you know, he'll be a special player. Uh, Tomar Portentense is an interesting uh, Juco All-America recruit, uh, can, can really shoot the ball, shot 47% from three-point range uh, uh, this past season in his second season of Juco ball. Uh, Casey Morsell is a recruit. It'll be a different team. I mean, this year's team was so guard-heavy uh, with, with the three guys who were head of the NBA. Uh, and, and Kyle Guy, Ty Jerome, uh, and DeAndre Hunter. Uh, I think next year's team will be a, it'll be a little bigger. Tony may have to have some some flexibility this year. He played a lot of four guard next year. I think you'll see him, you know, go a little bit more with the big guys. But um, but yeah, the talent's there uh, from the recruiting standpoint. There are a lot of four star players. Uh, let uh, me ask you. Uh, let me let me ask you one more thing before we run, and that is. Where can people read you and hear you, Chris? Uh, AugustaFreePress.com for me, JerryRankless.com for Jerry. And our book's available online, both of those sites, uh, AugustaFreePress.com, JerryRankless.com. Also available at New Dominion Bookshop, Mentor's GBA Bookstore in Charlottesville, and County Line Mercantile in Barbersville. Uh, you can actually pick up copies uh, in person at those locations. And the title is? Team of Destiny, Inside Virginia Basketball's Run to the 2019 National Championship. Chris Graham, Jerry Radcliffe, always a pleasure chatting with you. Uh, Good luck with the book, and thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Mike.